Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of the University of Southern California has shown a specific artificial sweetener may actually be having the opposite effect to that which is desired when it comes to losing weight. Well, enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of the Keck School of Medicine has got to offer. This is a review of a study that was penned by the University of Southern California's Keck School of Medicine. The study describes how certain sweeteners actually increase food cravings in certain types of people. And there are links in the description below to the articles I used to put this presentation together. A synthetic aftertaste may not be the only side effect of switching to diet soda, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Drinks that contain the artificial sweetener sucralose may increase food cravings and appetite in women and people who are obese. Well, that's according to a new study led by researchers at the University of Southern California's Keck School of Medicine. Published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, the study is one of the largest to date to examine the effects of artificial sweeteners also called non-nutritive sweeteners, or NNS, on brain activity and appetite responses in different segments of the population. More than 40% of adults in the US currently use artificial sweeteners as a calorie-free way to satisfy their sweet tooth and, in some cases, accomplish weight loss goals. Despite their prevalence, the health consequences of artificial sweeteners are still highly debated, with no clear consensus on their effects on appetite, glucose metabolism and body weight. Kathleen Page, MD, the study's corresponding author and an associate professor of medicine at the Keck School of Medicine, said there is controversy surrounding the use of artificial sweeteners because a lot of people are using them for weight loss. While some studies suggest they may be helpful, others show they may be contributing to weight gain, type 2 diabetes and other metabolic disorders. Our study looked at different population groups to tease out some of the reasons behind those conflicting results. To study the effects of artificial sweeteners, Dr. Page and her colleagues studied 74 participants who, during the course of three different visits, consumed 300 milliliters of a drink sweetened with sucrose, that's table sugar, or a drink sweetened with sucralose, an artificial sweetener, or a drink of water, and that was used as a control. The study group comprised of an equal number of males and females who were identified as either healthy weight, overweight, or as obese, thus allowing the researchers to explore the potential differences between these different population groups. In the two hours that followed, Dr. Page and her team measured the following. Activation of regions of the brain responsible for appetite and food cravings, and this was in response to being shown pictures of high calorie foods such as burgers and donuts. It was done using an imaging technique called functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI. They also checked the levels of glucose, that's blood sugar, insulin and other metabolic hormones in the blood. They also checked the amount of food that was consumed at the free buffet provided at the end of each session. Imaging studies showed increased activity in regions of the brain responsible for food cravings and for appetite, both in women and people who were obese. This was after they consumed the sucralose containing drinks when compared to consuming drinks that contained real sugar. The study also showed an across the board decrease in the levels of the hormone that tell the body, I feel full. This was after participants drank the sucralose containing drink. And that's compared to people who drank the drink that contained sugar, suggesting artificially sweetened beverages may not be effective in actually suppressing hunger. 
So, did gender play a role? After female participants drank the drink containing the artificial sweetener, they ate more at the buffet than ladies that drank the drink containing the sugar, whereas food intake did not differ at all for male participants. However, Dr. Page recommends interpreting these findings with some caution because she says all participants had fasted overnight before the study and were more likely to be hungrier than usual. And I would pose the question, are women usually hungrier after overnight fasting? Personally, I don't think this is a relevant issue. Dr. Page of the Keck School of Medicine says, our study starts to provide context for the mixed results from previous studies when it comes to the neural and behavioral effects of artificial sweeteners. By studying different groups, we were able to show that females and people with obesity may be more sensitive to artificial sweeteners. For these groups, drinking artificially sweetened drinks may trick the brain into feeling hungry, which may in turn result in more calories being consumed. This study used drinks that contain the artificial sweetener, sucralose. So if you are female or an overweight male or female, or a diabetic and you use diet drinks to reduce your sugar intake or your calorie intake, it may be an idea to check the ingredients and see which artificial sweetener they actually contain. It may also be an idea to check the sweeteners that you use in your tea and coffee. That said, there are several artificial sweeteners on the market that are used as sugar substitutes. It may be that these options have the same effect as sucralose, Unfortunately, this study did not test other artificial sweeteners. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So it looks as though sucralose and possibly other artificial sweeteners as well, although are not gonna spike your insulin, may well be tricking your brain into thinking you're not full. This may cause you to eat more, take in more calories, which is not what you want if you're using diet drinks as a way of losing weight. So if you are a woman, and possibly a man or a woman who is overweight and you're using diet drinks as part of a weight loss uh, regime, it may be the time to look for another sugar-free option, possibly even weaning yourself off diet drinks altogether. Easier said than done, I know. I used to drink a lot of regular Coke. I then moved on to Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi. When I found out that really wasn't uh, a good idea also, I now tend to drink now a lot more coffee, tea, and water also. So that's it for today. Let me know what you think of the video. Please take care. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.